Why, hello there. So last week I began the process of setting up a brand new enclosure for my pair of Vietnamese mossy frogs. If you haven't checked that video out, definitely go watch it either before or after watching this one as it explains how I built the actual enclosure. Now Vietnamese mossy frogs are one of my favorite frogs on the planet. Their personalities are so cool. They have such cool camouflage. Their skin color and texture is just amazing. And overall, they're just really great frogs. And as the name suggests, they do come from Vietnam, more specifically caves and cliffs in Vietnam. So I really tried to capture that look and feel while making this tank. So enough wasting your time, it's time to get started. So like I said last week, I set up the enclosure and then this week I will be doing background, hardscape, plants, all that good stuff. So the first thing we need to do, as usual, is go to the garage. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to tackle today is making the background. Now, I've kind of been practicing and preparing the past few weeks for this specific background. I've started testing out new techniques, trying new ways of doing things, and I think I sort of have kind of a plan of maybe kind of what I want to do. I want to add more depth. I don't want it to be as flat, but I also don't want to go too overboard because I also kind of want to blend the scape in with this. I want it to really feel like one whole cohesive piece. But before we do any of that, I need to get the background cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the background. I'll just kind of see where that takes me. Um, I'll try and create some 3D shapes and whatnot. And uh, hopefully it doesn't suck. The first thing I did was start by taking some measurements of the tank itself. I then transferred those measurements onto a sheet of XPS foam. I then ran a ruler along it and cut it with a razor blade. After that, I went and snapped it on the edge. Then I did a little bit of a test fit just to make sure that everything was gonna fit okay. Then on the back piece of the background, I also accounted for the actual drip wall feature itself. Okay, so now that we have the background pieces cut, like I've mentioned before, I've kind of been preparing for this background technique with a lot of my old ones. So I wanna do all of those little bumps and you know depth and all the little rocky bits and whatnot. But I don't really know how I wanna do that because I also wanna blend it with escape. So I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually going to get my driftwood and I'm going to basically scape this tank the way that I want it and then from there I'll try and lock that in place for a second and then I will draw on the patterns that I want and start to add those bigger pieces just because I think that's going to be so much easier just so that I know what I want because if I just go ahead and put all the stuff here yeah I can scape it but then I might have to carve out foam or maybe it won't look the way that I want. So I want to prioritize the wood and the hardscape first. Using a variety of different pieces of wood, I started to do the scape. Now I didn't really know what I wanted to do for this. I kind of just went along with it and kind of just, you know, messed around with things. It honestly took quite a while and I wasn't really happy with it at first, but after working with it for a while and just playing around with things, I ended up coming up with something that I was pretty happy with. So after a little bit of scaping and working around with things, this is the scape that we have. Now, at first I was not feeling this scape. In fact, I even had to go and just take a little break because I just it wasn't coming to me. I came back and this is what I came up with and I absolutely love this scape. I also still have a few smaller pieces of wood that I might add in here and there, but that'll be after I get you know, all of the backgrounds done. Um, you also see that I added quite a few pots in there and I really wanted to do that because there's a certain way I want to plant this thing and I want that to be tailored to the hardscape. So what I'm going to do is I have the tank set up now. I'm going to go back and I'm going to draw my designs all over it. And I'm going to, you know, just kind of wherever I feel like little stones and stuff need to be. And I just overall, I just want to make it more natural than I have before instead of just that plain background. And then once we're done with that, I'll go back with the spray foam and we'll blend it all together. So the first thing I did was start by dismantling the scape. This way I could actually remove the backgrounds and work on them. Now, in order to transfer the designs, I used some tissue paper and then outlined it with a Sharpie. I then cut out all of the pieces separately and just built them up in layers all over the pieces of foam. Then to make sure that they stayed in place, I went and ran some hot glue along them and just stuck them all in place the way that I had had it laid out. After that, in order to do the bigger rock foundations, the ones that kind of go across multiple backgrounds, I kind of just copy the shape of it and then just keep doing that until I just build up layer after layer after layer and eventually get the shape that I want. Hey there, come look at this. So here's where we're at at the moment. I've got all the wood in just temporarily. I've got all the little rock patterns and then the bigger ones in the back. So far, I think it looks pretty good. It's kind of hard to visualize it because it's also pink and sharp and whatnot. So the next step and the next thing we need to do is uh, carve the background. And the way I'm going to be carving the background is by using a wire brush drill bit, I'm just going to kind of shape things up a bit. I'm not really using it too much for texture, although it does additionally add some. I'm mostly just using it just to shape things up and get everything the way that I want it to look. 
Now I did have kind of a technique to this. I wanted to almost taper the background like towards the front of the tank. So I have these like bigger rock structures as you can see. And I kind of wanted to just taper it down from there to make like a sort of smoother slope. I just thought this would make it look more natural as well as help with that blending effect that I mentioned earlier. But anyway, I repeated this process on all three of the background panels until I was done. Then I did the exact same thing for the rocks, except I attached them with hot glue temporarily to it. That way I could just get a better blend from the actual rock to the background itself. So I just repeated this process and followed the same techniques that I did for the rest of the background. And then I added the actual side piece on just to help blend that together, just to create a seamless look. Okay, two hours later and uh, here's where we are. So I've got all of the background carved. I've got even the little rock pieces. I think it all turned out pretty good. It's kind of the craziest background I've ever made because like I mentioned, even these parts, like normally I would just put these bumps on and then carve the rest, but I even went and like kind of tapered it and almost did it as if it was like actually scaping with stones. And that was kind of what I wanted to do because that's just going to make the blending effect better. It's going to make it all feel more cohesive and just like one solid piece. So now that we're at this point, the thing that I'm going to do since the wire brush drill bit, like I said, doesn't really add texture. It just kind of shapes it is I'm going to go over it with the heat gun just to kind of harden it and seal it up. And then I'm going to go over it with sandpaper because that'll give it a really nice, like, kind of smoother rock look, more like boulders instead of these jagged stones. And then I'm going to get my razor blade and I'm just going to kind of do some score lines to make some little scratches and inconsistencies in texture because I've done that on past ones and it looks great. And then uh, we can move on to painting. To paint it, I'll use some white tintable dry lock as well as concrete pigments to add color. I'll start by pouring some dry lock into a small container and then using the charcoal concrete pigment, adding some of that into the mix and then stirring it up so that I get a dark base coat. Then I apply this base coat over the background and the purpose of this coat is to make sure that you cover the entire thing. Make sure to get in all the nooks and crannies. This will help bring out the texture later. Once the base coat had dried, I started putting on another layer. This one's basically the same as the last one, except it's lighter and I'm not trying to push it in all of the nooks and crannies. This will kind of be like the secondary base coat and then I'll just repeat it with lighter dry brush coats to help really pop out that texture. Okay, so now we have the background painted. I'm really happy with the way this is turning out so far. But the next thing we need to do is I'm going to actually put the backgrounds back in the tank and then I'm going to assemble the scape. And then like I mentioned earlier, in order to lock the scape in place, I'm going to use some of that expanding foam. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go back and carve it and paint it, all that good stuff. One other important step that honestly I kind of forgot about till now is the actual filter itself. Now, where the pipe goes up from the tank in the background, the one for the drip wall, the input for that is in the bottom left corner, and that's how it's been designed basically since I've had this tank set up. Now, what's also in the bottom left corner is that giant stone, the one that I made out of foam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve out a little like slot in that, and then I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm gonna you know, carve a few holes so that water can actually get in there. I'll probably carve out a little bit of the background too, just so that I have more space to kind of work with that. But I wanna take care of that first, and then once we get that done, then we can move on to the rest. So let's take care of that. I started things off by adding the background back into the tank. That way I could use some hot glue to attach the larger stones, except for the bottom left one, which I'll explain in a minute. Then I started to assemble the scape for the 478th time. I also hot glued a few pots in place and then I could move on to the spray foam. Now the spray foam was mostly just to lock things in place, but it also helped just kind of taper that rock look that I wanted a little more and help blend everything together. So I applied it primarily to where the wood actually connects with the background and then obviously over pots just to hide that ugly pot look. Then I came back with the wire brush drill bit and do the same carving technique for it. There were a few areas where the wire brush drill bit couldn't reach so I had to do that by hand. But once that was finished, I vacuumed out the bottom of the tank and then I used the heat gun and the sandpaper just to help, you know, blend that texture a bit better. Then I went on to painting it. And this is following the same technique as the background with the base coat and then the lighter dry brush coats over that just to make everything look super cohesive and natural. Okay, so now that we're at this point, all of the foam areas have been painted. So the next step is to bring this thing back down to the animal room. But wait, before I do that, I just want to wash off the background real quickly just to remove of any debris and then I want to do a water test on all the water features just to make sure that everything is good and flowing the way that I want it to. And then we can move it down to the animal room and start working on the next step. So I sprayed the background down with the hose just to remove any debris and then also tested the drip wall feature just to make sure that it was what I want. Once I had determined that everything was working, I moved the tank back downstairs. So now that we're at this point and we have the tank downstairs, the next step is going to be planting this thing. 
Now, when I set up this tank, I did something a little bit different than I normally do with my tanks. A lot of times when I'm making tanks, I don't even think about the planting process until I get towards the end of the build. A lot of times I'll just go grab what I can get and what would work in that environment and just throw it in there wherever it looks good. But with this one, I specifically placed pots in areas that I wanted plants to be, and I specifically picked out plants based on texture and color and size. And you can kind of see where I have some of the pots. So I have one there, one there, and then I have a spot there and a spot there. And this is gonna kind of be my focal point of the whole thing. All the like really big plants are gonna be up and around here, and then I'll have a few kind of, you know, here and there, and then the smaller ones are gonna kind of spread out from that. But before we go ahead and add the plants, I need to do a little bit of prep work on them. So. Let's come prep some plants. With my plants selected, I started like usual by removing each plant from its pot and then breaking up all of the roots from the soil, trying to get as much off as possible. Then I take it over to the sink and just try and remove even more of it. And then to finish things up, I let them soak in warm dechlorinated water for about 15 minutes. So while we're waiting on those plants to soak, I wanna show you guys something cool I found. Come look at this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right, right there. Oh, oh, that's not where that was. Okay, so now that we have the plants prepped, the next step is to uh, plant the tank. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put these plants where I originally planned them to be. I'm sure I'll change up some of them. But, uh, and then after that we can move on to the next step, so let's get planting. So now that we have the planting done, I'm really happy with the way it works out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the substrate. And the substrate that I'm using is the Aqua Natural Prairie Sand, I'm pretty sure. For some reason, I always have a really hard time picking out substrates for these types of enclosures. Um, I thought this one would look the best with it. Plus, most of it's going to be covered by leaf litter and botanicals anyway. Which, speaking of, I also have some botanicals that I'm going to add. Now, before I go ahead and add the substrate in, I want to get this filter in because I kind of need that in before I put the substrate in. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hook up the filter, I'm going to get that in, I'm going to put the rock over it, I'm going to permanently attach that rock for now, and I'm going to go ahead and pour all of the substrate in. So I added the filter to the back left corner where I wanted it to be, then I permanently attached the rock and added the substrate. So now that the substrate's in place, uh, the next thing that we need to do is the final details. Now the final details that I want to do is, for once, I'm actually going to add ficus. I've been propagating it for a few months now, so I have a whole bunch of it that I can put in here. And then I've also been propagating some moss, so I'm also going to go ahead and throw some of that in there. And then I have been soaking a few botanicals over the course of the last few days, as well as the Indian almond leaves. Mossy frogs really, really love like that black water stuff. It helps lower the pH of the water, which you'll find in their natural habitat. So adding stuff like Indian almond leaves or even botanicals is perfect for them. And then I'm going to fill the tank up with water and uh, get this drip all going and uh, then it'll be done. So, enough dilly-dallying, let's get this done.
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been two plus weeks in the making. I've had ups and downs with this project, but I love the way that this turned out. This is such a huge step up from any other setup I've made. I planned so much for this. I worked so hard for this. I pushed my physical limit, my mental limit. I've never worked this hard on a project before and I couldn't be more happy with the way it turned out. Frogs are loving it as usual. Overall, I just, I really, really, really love how this one turned out. I'm so glad that, you know, I had kind of tested stuff before this to kind of work up to this point because I think it really, really helped. Just to give me more of an idea of what I, you know, just to give me more of an idea of what I was getting myself into. And then now that I'm even doing this, I can apply it to future projects and it'll just get better and better and better. And now I have the urge to redo every single setup in my room. So maybe I will. But again, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions about anything I did in this build, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys next week.